In this video, we'll run through how to set up a basic schedule for a residential construction project. I'm going to go over some really easy and simple ways to create a schedule, leaving you with material that you can expand on. I'm going to use the Billbook platform through which you can share with clients and the rest of your team. And if you're already a pro at making schedules, stick around to check out the specific tools used in the video or skip forward to when we cover more advanced topics. Let's jump right into our example, kitchen remodel project. All you need to think about for a basic schedule are two types of elements, a phase and a task. Our phases will be things like planning, rough construction, and finishing. And our tasks are any specific items you want to itemize within a phase, like framing or countertop installation. I'm going to set up my schedule in BuildBook, but the same principles apply for any tool you use. To walk through the example, head over to buildbook.co to get a free trial, which will give you full access to do everything in the video. Once you're logged in, add a new project. After it's created, you can go to Schedule to add your phases. I'll add a planning phase to cover things like design, client selections, budgeting, and sourcing for ordering all the materials. Next, I'll add a rough construction phase, and lastly, a finished construction phase. You don't need to be too concerned about the date ranges because you can easily move them around on the timeline afterwards. After these are saved, items will appear on the left column while the duration runs horizontally. You can zoom in and out to change the scale of the timeline and also pan left and right. This will be your Gantt chart view. From here, we can move phases and resize them to change the duration. Go ahead and set those up for however it will make sense for your operation. Next, we'll add our tasks. I'll go ahead and add design, and again, it's easy to change the range, so you can just quickly save all your tasks first and move them around later. After saving these two tasks, I can move them around so they work for my schedule. I went ahead and spent a few minutes to populate the rest of my tasks, and this is what a very basic schedule looks like. You've mapped out all your phases and tasks, and now you've got something to work with, a timeline you can share with the client to say, it looks like the kitchen will be finished just before Christmas. Yay! But wait, it'll be finished by Christmas only if all goes according to plan. And how often does that happen? Right now, all of these items have no relationships with each other. So if, say, our design process slips a week, you'll have to move everything one by one out a week. So now what? Well, it's time to add what we call dependencies. So what we'll do now is officially link our tasks to our phases, which you can also do while creating them, but just to layer on one feature at a time, I'm adding them separately. We'll open the design task and open the dependencies feature and select the phase this task belongs to. Then you'll be able to see the green bar change shape a little bit um, to let you know that it has a linked item. So then I'll go ahead and do the same for budget and sourcing. And we'll do the same thing for the rough construction phase. And after you add the first task to a phase, there's a shortcut to add the rest. You can drag and drop tasks. How easy is that? Now you can move the entire phase out a week and all the items within move with it. Now we'll add dependencies to our tasks so it's clear that you can't perform one task before another gets completed. For example, if we don't finish the design, we can't finalize the budget nor order materials. To do that, you can simply draw dependency lines by connecting the dots by grabbing uh, one node and dragging it over to another. You can also open the modal up to set the rules from the drop down menu, but I find the drag and drop option to be much faster. So now when I move a task, the dependent items move with it, so if cabinets slip by a week, countertops and everything else connected will automatically shift. And now you've got a solid schedule set up. Now let's get into other cool stuff you can add, which are slightly more advanced but commonly used. So let's talk about getting paid. You can include other important elements like the payment schedule. Sure, why not? So let's get some payment items on our schedule by going to budget and adding a deposit item. Give it an amount and a due date. We'll do the same for an installment and a final payment. On your schedule, you'll now see some new elements appear and you can move them to key positions on your schedule. Then you can add them to a phase and set dependencies. 
For example, we'll say that construction won't begin until the first installment is paid. And also, we're not starting to design until we get a deposit. Another huge hang-up is waiting for clients to figure out what materials they want to order. And we can even put those items in our schedule. Head to Selections to add some categories and items. I'll set up these selection items as placeholders. So now on our schedule, we've got new elements to move around. I'll add surface covering and cabinets to the planning phase and draw the dependency lines. Related to that topic is assigning clients tasks. In many cases, the client offers to purchase all the finished materials. And because no one ever wants to nag the client, you can simply assign it as a task. It'll be visible on the calendar, they'll get reminders, and it'll stay on their radar. So as an example, I can itemize uh, everything for the client that they need to order, and it gives them a little mini checklist inside of a task. You can check out the client view, and under tasks, they'll see, first of all, anything that's shared, specifically shared with them, and anything assigned to them will have their avatar on the right side. Opening it up will indicate, yes, it's assigned to them. Um, and in this case, they got to order everything by October 10th to stay on track. And that wraps up the basics. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful.